This week we've been focusing on Jesus' baptism and what that means for us. Today, we will specifically look at Jesus, his baptism, and how God looks at us through Jesus. Today we read selected verses from Psalm 45. We will start with verse 1 and continue on through verse 7, then jumping ahead and finishing with verse 17. Please join me in reading the bold verses. We read beginning at verse 1. My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace, since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrow pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O oh God, will last forever and ever. The scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. I will perpetuate your through all generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Optical illusions. Maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. By definition, according to the internet, an optical illusion is an experience of seeming to see something which does not exist or is other than it appears. Let's take a look at some optical illusions. First one, the Ponzo illusion. Why don't you take a look at that picture, and specifically the two yellow lines, and even more specifically, the length of those yellow lines. Now, take a look at the second one. As you see, the lines are actually the same length, even though in the first picture, the one on the bottom seems smaller. The next one. The duck-rabbit illusion. As this appears on the screen, I want you to think about what you see first. Do you see the duck? Do you see the rabbit? Maybe you see both. Maybe you don't see either. As you take a look at it, you can see that the beak of the duck is the ears of the rabbit. And I have one more. This one's called the village elephant optical illusion. Some of you may see an elephant, some of you may see a village, maybe you'll see both. In between the elephant's legs and the trunk is where the village is made possible. Those are supposed to be huts. If you're trying to see the elephant, take a look at the outline of the birds, the tree, and the huts. Hence the optical illusion seeing two things. I want you to keep that idea in mind of an optical illusion as we dig into God's word today. Let's take a look at verse 1. We see the writer of the psalm making a reference to the preservation of the word of God throughout all generations and reciting those to the king. This king is referring to Jesus. And for those of you who had memory work in grade school, or maybe just think about your favorite Bible passage right now, or the commandments, I'm assuming you know some of those by heart, which in turn may help you continue to pass the word of God on from generation to generation. We know God's word is constant, it will never change, and it will continue to be valuable for the rest of your life. In verse 2, we see Jesus discussed as the most excellent of men. Think about a king and the attributes of a king. When envisioning a king, you probably think about someone who has manly traits, probably very handsome, royal clothes, security guards, servants, and the list could go on and on and on. Here Jesus is described as a king. And he was not just any ordinary man or king, but he was also God. This psalm, which was actually written about a thousand years before Jesus came, still has the Holy Spirit lead the author to refer to Jesus as the kingly Messiah. In verses 3 and 5, 3 through 5, excuse me, 
We see the encouraging words to the king to signify his power and majesty. In verse 3, we see that he will be clothed with splendor and majesty. In verse 4, the king will ride forth victoriously in behalf of truth, humility, and righteousness. Think about the emphasis on humility. How many kings do you know who were or are humble? Probably not many, but Jesus was. He was very humble. In verse 5, we see the power of the king on display. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. In verses 6 and 7, as we have been discussing this week, we see a prophecy in reference to Jesus' baptism. We read again. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of your justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. We know the throne will last forever and ever, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. He truly does love righteousness and hate wickedness. In the book of Proverbs, we see that, specifically chapter 6, beginning at verse 16. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Each and every one of you, and myself included, are guilty of those sins. But thankfully, Jesus, our King, has taken our place and kept all those commands perfectly for us because we know that we cannot live up to God's expectations. In the second half of verse 17, we see the prophecy of Jesus' baptism fulfilled. This is another example of the wonderful truth of the timeless Word of God. Through Jesus and our baptism, God is able to look at us, how blessed we are. Jesus died and took our place for all the detestable things that we commit in our life. As the Apostle Paul said, the sins I know I commit, as well as the sins I do not know I commit. Jesus died for each and every one of those sins. Let's take a look at the optical illusions again from the beginning of chapter. The first one, the Ponzo illusion, the duck rabbit illusion, and the village elephant optical illusion. In all those illusions, there seems to be a conflict or a discrepancy. In the same way, when God looks at us through Jesus and our baptism, instead of seeing all the sins that we commit and a sinner, God is able to look at us and instead of seeing a sinner, he sees a child of God, a believer, a Christian. And therefore, through Jesus, we are able to go to God. In verse 17, we are encouraged to preserve and share this information with all the people. We will continue to share this me message from generation to generation. Now you might be sitting in chapel right now and think, how can I do that? How can I preserve this word from generation to generation? But think about how you can be a light to the rest of the world. Think about the words that come out of your mouth. The way that you treat people you may not know. The way that you act at Starbucks. The way that you act at a sporting event concert, a musical. How can your actions reflect God's word and be a light? How thankful we are to have God that instead of seeing the darkness, has seen the wonderful light of our Savior through baptism. We praise him now and forever.